This is What's in My Backpack Japan Edition. First of all, how do you pick a backpack? I never know what I'm gonna find on my travels. So I need something that is reliable, is big and can fit all my gear, is waterproof, it's easy to access, and has a lot of pockets and compartments so I can organize my gear better. My choice is the Peter McKinnock Nomadic 35 liters. It's built like a tank, waterproof, lots of pockets and compartments. It has several handles, so you can basically grab your backpack from different sides. The back is honestly one of the best designed backpack that I've ever seen. Even when it's incredibly heavy, this fits very comfortably and it distributes the weight in a great way. Sometimes for short trips, I don't even bring a carry-on case. I just put the clothes right here in the front pocket. And here on the side, of course, that's where I put my tripod or if I don't have a tripod, I put water. As you can see, of course, you can customize all your different sections. My go-to cameras are the Sony Alpha 7S III and the Sony Alpha 7 R5. Of course, the R5 is for photography and the S3 is mostly for video. But if I'm in a situation where I need both and I can only bring one camera, the R5 is a great combination for both. As far as lenses goes, I brought my trusted 35mm 1.4, which is actually the one that I'm using right now to shoot this video. And it's on the Alpha 7 S3. Then I have the 14mm 1.8 G Master. This is not just a great super wide angle that doesn't have distortion, but I bring it with me especially for like very small spaces or for like in this trip, astrophotography. Then I have the 7200 2.8 version two. This lens is amazing. You can use it for anything from street photography, portraits, everything work with this lens. And especially the second generation is great. It keeps the same sides, it does not extend, and the stabilization is outstanding. So especially when I'm shooting video, it becomes an amazing lens. Then for street photography and special eye candy shots, this is my probably favorite lens of all time. It's a Leica Summilux 50 millimeter. It's a pretty expensive lens, but if I had to pick one lens for the rest of my life, this would be it. It's worth every dollar. It's not just the sides and the build, it is the quality that you get. How sharp it is, the color. I mean, Leica manufacturer is not unknown for people that know about photography. And you know, this is like an old school manual lens. And honestly, it's, been, it's, it's a masterpiece of crafting. Now let's move on to the vlogging section on my backpack. This is actually something that I don't do often, but in this trip I had to bring every single gear that I could use. The first one is the DJI Action 3. It's a great competitor for GoPros. It can do all the good stuff that you want from an action camera. You can go underwater, you can just throw it everywhere, it can do time lapses, it can shoot very high quality 4K. And the main reason that I brought it on this trip is to do time lapses. I just like to use a small magic arm and clamp the camera to different spots, like in the car, and get time lapses. The next item from DJI is the Osmo. This camera is great because you can just put it in your pocket, and even if you're going to lunch or if you're doing something that it doesn't require, you know, eye hand photography or video, this one can get the job done and actually done pretty well. It comes with a gimbal that in a second is gonna turn on and set up. So even when you're walking around, this is gonna keep the shot steady and smooth. It's a great option for portable vlogging. My second option for vlogging is the Insta360 GO. This is probably the smallest camera I ever had. It's the perfect tool when you don't wanna bring gear with you, or if you go like in places where you don't wanna have you know, bigger cameras. And one of the best features and the reason why I brought it on this trip is that you have this necklace with a magnet that you can put under your shirt and then take the camera off and just attach it to the necklace. So it just stays on your chest and you can see from all my footage, you can use it kind of like a, as a subjective shot and do great behind the scene and vlogging of whatever you do. Especially in my case, I love that I can shoot a behind the scene of me shooting. As often I travel by myself and I don't have anybody that can actually shoot behind the scene of me working. This is a great option. 
so I can focus on my work and my photography or my video and get a little bit of behind the scene of the way that I work. It also very cute the fact that it has this little tripod so you can even like you know put it on the table and vlog. My last vlogging tool is the Isna 360 one inch sensor. For 360 vlogging this is probably the best sensor that is on the market right now. So it's not just low light but also like the quality of the image that you get. I brought this one with me because shooting in 360 gives you the opportunity to basically have multiple cameras at the same time. So while you're just walking the streets of Tokyo, it's not just shooting at you, but you also have footage of the streets in front of you. Or if you learn how to use the stick properly, it can become like a drone or a mini jib and everything with something that can fit in your pocket. So that's it for camera lenses. Now let's go on to accessories and audio. For audio, my go-to lately, it's been the DJI wireless system. It's slick, compact, and honestly, the quality is pretty good. You can hear me right now from the microphone that I had on my chest. Some of the best features, in my opinion, are the fact that the case, it's a battery, so it can recharge your wireless microphones. You can record internally on these little devices. So that means if something happens with the transmission that you have to the camera, you have a backup in your microphone. And this keep it nice and clean, you have this little magnet that is barely visible with the microphone that it's right on your chest and gets the nice bass sound. Then for other accessories, of course, portable fast SSD drive. This is where I dump all the footage and often actually work off the drive. They're fast, reliable, and small and lightweight. This one is a T7 by Samsung and it's four terabytes. Then I have three variable ND by Tiffin. These, they go on every single lens that I have on my backpack and they're very important when I'm shooting video especially because if I wanna shoot wide open and it's a sunny day out, I wanna use the variable ND and close the stops down. Of course, I have the original Sony batteries. I have five of them because even in a trip like this, sometimes I don't want to charge. I just wanna use all the batteries that I have and then go back home and charge one by one. In that way, you can also save some space in your backpack. Then I have a Pelican case with all the cards and backup cards. I use a Type-A CFast for Sony and they come in different sizes. Then in the inside pocket, I keep my 15 inches MacBook Pro. For the longest time, I had a 13 inches, which is great for traveling. But then once this M1 chip came out, this size monitor and this laptop are great for working on the field. Then of course, I keep some cleaning tools that I always need for the sensor and the lenses. And then in the top pockets, I keep a bunch of cables. You never know what kind of cable you're gonna need. So it's USB-C to USB-C, USB-C to the regular, and a bunch of adapters. As a tripod, I opted for the Peak design. It's small, lightweight, can extend very well. It's a great overall tripod for traveling. And that's what's in my backpack, Japan edition. If you have any question, please write it below, subscribe to Drama TV, and I'll see you next time.